Hi, my name is Mike Abe, and welcome to my KSP campaign. I'm here about the moon with my asteroid miner, which two episodes ago put in a rather lackluster performance, generating resources for me for me from asteroid Yoe. So I detached it from the asteroid, and now I'm sending it on its way to Minmus. Note the rather strange thing that's happening with Kerbin's texture there. It's showing right through the moon. Can't say I've ever had that happen before. So anyway, at Minmus, I happen to have a uh, resource driller on its way to Minmus right now that you'll be seeing very, very shortly, in fact, uh, with the mission to harvest 400 units of ore from Minmus's surface. So I figure, well, you know what? Why don't I put that thing in orbit? It doesn't have uh, a convertitron on it. This thing does have a Convertitron on it. Maybe the two together could make something from that 400 units. I don't know. I just don't know what else to do with it. Oops, overcooked that a little bit. Okay, i got to bring it back. Let's put it on retrograde. Get rid of the maneuver. Don't need that anymore. Okay, and we'll just sort of just do little puffs here with the main engines. Bring that periapsis so it's right underneath Minmus. Oh, that'll do. We'll do a correction burn uh, once outside of the moon's sphere of influence. That should be easy enough to do. But why don't we get back to this vehicle? A vehicle I've always considered an experimental vehicle, something to help me learn a bit about how the resource harvesting works now in stock. And it, just to remind people what it did, it harvested all the ore from asteroid Yoy, a B-class asteroid, and really produced just a pretty dismal amount of fuel from that. In fact, it, that's the fuel that it's using right now to get itself to Minmus. And at the time, I kind of mentioned, well, man, asteroid mining, this might just be a colossal waste of time. Well, I, I, I was speaking... I think a little bit prematurely with that. Uh, this thing has the smaller Convertitron 125 on it, and uh, looking into the numbers and getting a couple of comments from people a couple of episodes ago, yeah, the Convertitron 125, it kind of sucks. <laughs> it really does. It turns out that the 2.5 meter version of this thing, the Convertitron 250, which I have unlocked, um, is about 10 times more efficient. So there you go. I learned something. I got it. You got if you're gonna do this, you got to do it right. You got to go with the bigger Convertitron 250 to get this working. So I do have a larger version, not quite this kind of design, with a Convertitron 250 and larger amounts of ore, and it's on its way to the moon. I got a contract to bring some ore from the moon, so I'm gonna go bigger, and we'll see how that goes. That's gonna have to be for a future episode that's currently being built in the Kerbal Construction Time building queue. But in the meantime, we are now out of the moon's sphere of influence. We'll set up this correction burn. And this will get us to Minmus in about 13 and a half days. And in the meantime, why don't we get ourselves to my Minmus driller, which is now coming towards its closest approach to Minmus, getting ready to do its capture burn. We'll have to make a decision on where to put it down. And like I mentioned, this has a contract actually associated with it to harvest 400 units from ore from the surface of Mimis, and then all I have to do is get it into orbit. So my plan is to bring this thing, after it's done its job, to Minmus Station, where it'll wait for my, my asteroid harvester with its Convertitron, and then we'll see what we can do. I should also mention while I'm doing all this, I do have a couple of other things, of course, coming up in this episode. The Karayan 1 and her crew are just about set to exit Kerbin's sphere of influence. And that's all about getting those folks all up to level 3. So we will be definitely joining them and then uh, plotting our return. And then I also have, well, a great big giant supply barge, mostly for fuel, on its way to Asteroid Yoy mostly because my asteroid harvesting idea really, really fell apart. And I do have a lander, and I want to get it fueled, and I want to get some missions out of the way. So uh, that, you will see its launch and get it towards the moon as well in this episode. All right.
right, there is our capture. Then once I got this down to a nice circular orbit, it was time to get out ScanSat and try to identify a landing spot. So I have the uh, resource overlay put on here. And everywhere seems to be either 1 or 0, 1 or 2% ore. I don't see anywhere with a higher concentration than that. And I do want to get down on the surface, so I'll, I, I went with somewhere that I'm going to be going over already in this orbit. So I'm kind of looking at sort of this area right here. I think this looks reasonably all right. It's 2% ore, and I think it looks like it's reasonably flat. And as the landing went without incident, and you see me do lots of powered landings before, I thought I'd just cut to the final part of this descent. I had used the Waypoint Manager mod to drop a waypoint there to give me something to sort of aim at, but there's no reason to land right at it. You can see I got a little bit of the remote tech wobble happening. That's a bit of a pain. Ah, no solar exposure. Turn this 90 degrees. Okay, that should be better. And the ground beneath me is pretty flat. Going to the slope indicator from Kerbal Engineer, so this should all go all right. It's just this wobble is the only thing that's got me a bit concerned. Consider just using, if I use the flight computer and lock it on the retrograde vector, the wobble stops. But I kind of like having direct control over it. And touch. Okay, turn off the SAS. So it'll stop wobbling. And. Yeah, I think it's settled down here nicely. Yeah, that's good. And good solar exposure. Excellent. Uh, let's get rid of that waypoint. We can turn that waypoint off. We don't need that anymore. In fact, we can just delete it. Let's get rid of it. There we go. Yes, delete it. Okay, gone. All right, let's zoom in here and get on the drill. Oh, wait a second, I have them on an action group. I can just... Hit deploy drills. There we go. Alrighty, and let's keep an eye on our resources. Again, we need 400 units of ore. Let's activate these radiators because we may be generating some heat here. I quite worked out the whole heating issues with the drills yet. Better safe than sorry. Okay, and let's pin these menus over here to the side. Get ready to do some surface harvesting. Here's the other one. Okay. Let's start surface harvesting. Wait. Oh, whoa, I got a message. Insufficient resource abundance? Need at least 2.5%? What? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm not harvesting anything. Oh, man. I was looking around everywhere was at most 2%. Oh, I guess it's not only the Convertitron 125 that's pretty useless, it's also these little drills that are pretty useless. Oh, man. And yeah, checking back in the VAB and reading over the fine print on the item description, only suitable for ore concentrations in excess of 2.5%. Ah. Uh. I really should get in the habit of reading these descriptions more thoroughly. Okay, well, I ended up leaving that driller just right where it is. I have no idea what else to do with it. Uh, it seems pretty useless on the surface of business. <laughs> and uh, decided I was just going to step it up with some bigger drills, which, of course, means that it needs more electricity, more heat radiation. That's going to mean more mass, i.e. more fuel. But I ended up putting something together. And we'll get the Columbia 2 to put this thing into orbit. But right now, we got to get ourselves out to the crew of the Korion 1, who have just exited Kerbin's sphere of influence and are now orbiting the sun. And I can see I do have actually even some science to get. I got uh, a chunk of a magnetometer scan to do. Where 
is my magnetometer? Oh, there you are. Okay. We'll log magnetometer data. There we go. And there's some dregs of some other stuff, a material spin, goo, and a, a gravity scan, which don't amount to very much. We'll send out Bob, of course. He'll go and collect that stuff up. But science is by no means the main reason that I'm out here. The main reason I'm out here is because this will put all of these Kerbals to level 3. Take a little bit of a closer look at them. All right, Gilly here, getting six for orbiting the sun. She's flown by the moon, but she's done that before. Orbiting Kerbin, she's obviously done that before. So just the six, but that puts her up to 16.25. That would be level three. Bill here, the orbiting Kerbin, that's nothing. Plant a flag on Mimus. Oh, he's never done that before. That's an extra three, plus the six for orbiting the sun. That's an extra nine. That puts him to 18.5, easily level three. Need 16 to be at level 3. That's Carol. Carol. Carol's got uh, putting a flag on me. Oh, Carol's exactly the same as Bill. She's going to get 9. Putting her up to 18.5 as well. And then Bob. Let's see. 6 for orbiting the sun. Plant a flag on the moon. Oh! That's an extra three for Bob there, because he's only flown by the moon. So nine for Bob, 19.25 for Bob. I suspect that might make him my most experienced Kerbal. I'll have to look into that. But right now, what we got to do is think about getting these folks home. Now, we only took six days to get out here. So we're actually uh, moving away from Kerbin at a reasonable clip. But that's okay. We got quite a lot of fuel. We should be all right. I started by targeting Kerbin Station, which is our eventual destination, and just sort of set it up a maneuver to burn straight at it. And then I started tweaking with the radial a little bit. Uh, this got me getting there slower but cheaper, so it was a trade-off between travel time and fuel costs, and then a little bit of normal as well to get my inclination close to zero. And I ended up with this 729 meter per second burn, which gets me there in a little under 14 days. Still have 1,061 in the Karayan, so I could easily afford it. All right, getting in there now. Let's select our periapsis, and we'll just keep going till this is around, I don't know, 45 kilometers or so. I think that should work out well. Alrighty, there we go. And then it was just a quick time warp to get back into Kerbin's sphere of influence. And we'll do a little bit of a correction. And that's where I discovered that I have a moon encounter after going around Kerbin. Uh, correction, I have a collision. <laughs> oh, super. Okay. Well, I used RCS to bring my periapsis down a little bit more, but even with the arrow braking trajectories, it still has me encountering the moon. No, no, it still has me impacting the moon. Yep, right there, there is my red X. <laughs> oh, dear. Wait, wait a second. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe I can use this to my advantage. Maybe I can, let's ban on the whole arrow braking idea. Maybe I can get a bit of a gravity assist from the moon. Use the moon's gravity to slow me down. That'd be fun. I've never done that. Well, I've done it in the past. I've never done it in this series. And a little bit of playing around. Got my closest approach to Kerbin to be a little bit over 70 kilometers, so not in the atmosphere. And I'm coming around the correct side of the moon to slow me down. The nice low periapsis. We'll just adjust the normal to keep everything in the equatorial plane. Looking pretty good. Tweak this a little bit more. Yeah, oh, back down. Oh, this is looking great. This is looking sweet. Look at this nice green resulting orbit. Here, why don't we snuggle in a little bit closer to the moon? Okay. And we'll turn this right down. We'll do a little bit. That's 
Uh, oh, no, radial. That's what I want to do. A little bit of radial. There we go. Oh, no, back out. 13 kilometers. Sweet. This is only a 2 meter per second burn, so uh, just do this in little puffs. Okay, I think that's going to be it for the main engine. Let's switch over to RCS to finish this off. Okay, let's get down. I'm just going to keep doing this until everything's in the equatorial plane here. That looks pretty good. All right, let's look at this. Okay, so close approach to Kerbin, 73 kilometers. And we are coming within 13 kilometers of the moon. Got this nice orbit here. Oh, this is awesome. Inclination, 180 degrees. Oh, no. Oh, I'm going around retrograde. I'm getting too much of a gravity assist from the moon. Oh, no. Oh, we got to fix this. Um, yeah, be, yeah. <laughs> this isn't going to work at all. Okay, I gotta move my closest approach to the moon out. And I tried a variety of different things with maneuver nodes and turned out the best thing I could find was just to puff prograde using RCS. And this ended up pushing out the apoapsis of my resulting orbit about 17 days away. But it ended up with this orbit that basically has me stalling. <laughs> oh, carrot apoapsis, I'll be moving so slowly that putting myself into an appropriate orbit should be pretty cheap. We'll rejoin with these folks in a future episode as they come around the closest approach to curving because I think the view will be nice and same thing when they go buzzing by the moon and then we'll see how things work out after that. But uh, right now, well, we got ourselves an important launch to do. This is my Yoi supply barge, and although I use the term supply barge, and it does have a few supplies to help outfit the crew of the Karayan 3, for the most part, this is just carrying a whole lot of fuel. Yeah, sometimes I think the best solutions are the simplest <laughs> solutions, and after my uh, failed attempt at harvesting any reasonable amount of fuel from asteroid Yoi, I decided the best thing to do is just to build one big old fuel barge. And as this all went without incident or complication, which I must say is a welcome change in pace, I thought I would just watch the whole ascent rather than spend a whole lot of time talking about the mission. I think it's been a while since you've seen an entire ascent of mine. Oh, this is where I realized that uh, although I put a probe core, antenna, reaction wheels, and batteries on that main booster. I didn't put any parachutes on it. <laughs> so although it's totally capable of be doing this autonomous uh, burn back, it doesn't have any way of being recovered. So uh, yeah, that was a bit of a foolish oversight, but pretty minor, I think, in the grand scheme of things. All right, so there goes our booster. And, of course, we performed our burn to get us out towards the moon. Well, why don't we cut ourselves right straight to the rendezvous? I did get pretty lucky with the timing of that ejection burn, too. Remember that asteroid Yoi here is in a polar orbit about the moon, so if I'm going to make this rendezvous with any degree of efficiency, I have to wait until the orbits are lined up right before I can make my ejection burn. I only had to wait an hour and 17 minutes. That's just like a couple of orbits. So that worked out fairly well. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but I, I rather like the shape of this thing. Sort of this boldish shape. Looks kind of sleek, I think. In a sort of a derpy sort of way. Got a poodle engine down there on the bottom doesn't provide a heck of a lot of thrust for something, or a heck of a lot of thrust compared to the mass of it, but more than adequate for it to get around. You're closing on this asteroid here. You'll see that there is an interesting uh, 
conflagration of various docking ports up there at the top. The reason for that is that I do have a plan, and it's in the building queue, a moon station that I was going to attach to this asteroid. And the original plan was for it to be to it attached to that um, driller that I sent off towards Minmus when I thought that thing would actually be useful. <laughs> But that has a 2.5 meter docking port on the top, and so the, the station module that's coming up has also 2.5 meter docking port. So I need a 2.5 meter docking port uh, to act as kind of an anchor for the station. So that's why there's this pair of 2.5 meter docking ports. So once this thing is finished with its fueling jobs, it will allow the, it'll go away and then the station will come in here in its place and then the station will stay permanently attached to the asteroid. I hope it'll end up working fairly well. And I got a big science module, the interstellar uh, KSB extended science module, which looks pretty cool. And if it works half as well as it looks, it should be generating quite a lot of science for me. Anyway, we are closing in here. Just kind of push myself forward just a little bit. There we go. And we are there. Okay, so then it comes time to start to fuel up. Well, two of the vehicles that are attached as well to this asteroid, one being the Arm B. I do have a contract to find an A-class asteroid and bring it into orbit around Kerbin. I'd like to reuse this vessel once again. And then of course we will be fueling up the Kegel 4 and getting ourselves some moon missions underway. This thing was able to fuel up both of these vehicles and still have plenty to spare. In fact, I can see I'm gonna definitely get at least one more Kigo 4 refueling out of this, so that is great. But before we get into picking out a moon landing spot, I wanna get the RMB on its way. So uh, I went back to the tracking station and started looking for an A-class asteroid. So as you can see, <laughs> A lot of asteroids I'm tracking here, and I'm I'm actually turning off the tracking on the ones that are no longer encountering Kerbin. And I ended up with sort of two uh, really good candidates to go after. CSG-707, which is encountering, encountering Kerbin in 18 days, and JUP-968, which is encountering a day later. But uh, JUP's trajectory has a closer periapsis and a lower inclination, so that means it'll be easier to capture. So that's the one I went with. So I popped back to the arm B, attached it, and started thinking about setting up an encounter. Now I've never done a rendezvous with an object outside of Kerbin's SOI while leaving from orbit about the moon. So uh this took a little bit of playing around. First job being to find this asteroid. I wish you could target asteroids through Kerbal Engineer, but you can't. Ah, there it is, okay. And now what I want to do, I want to more or less follow this same trajectory out. And I started just by kind of eyeballing a starting spot. and gave a couple hundred meters per second prograde. And oh! Oh, I already have an encounter. That's encouraging. So I popped ahead to maneuver a, a few orbits and then started playing around to see if I can close that encounter distance. It's a little bit weird in that because I'm in a polar orbit right now, the timing of the ejection burn actually affects the normal component of the trajectory relative to Kerbin's orbit, while the normal component of the ejection burn actually affects the radial component relative to Kerbin's orbit, so I have to sort of keep that in mind. I'm still having trouble getting this encounter to get closer. Let's zoom in here and see better what's going on. Okay. So I want to follow the trajectory that the asteroid has more or less. And I can see it's not quite doing that. Let's uh, try a mid-course correction burn here. See if I cannot pull that over and close the encounter distance that way. So we'll uh, let's turn this over this way. Oh, wait a second. 
Oh, I can see the problem. I'm following the asteroid's outbound trajectory out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. I need to follow its inbound trajectory. Okay. And I also figured out after a little bit, I'm still getting there early. So what I needed to do was just hop ahead a few more orbits and then played around with it a bit more, but then got to the point where, yeah, there we go. That's it. That's good enough for now. I got a 336 meter per second burn. That's got me a closest approach of 17,000 kilometers. I can dial that in a little bit later once I'm outside of the moon's sphere of influence. That burn is in four and a half days. So we're going to have to wait for it. And in the meantime, it's time to start thinking about what would be a good landing spot for my crew here on the moon. But I think that's going to have to be for the beginning of the next episode. I thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Thank you